The carnival is Kia's longest standing nameplate here in the Philippines. And at the height of the pandemic, it got a major overhaul. Now, not that anybody really asked for it, but Kia has given the carnival a mid-cycle refresh. And we're here for a quick preview. Majority of the changes in the exterior can be found here up front and some at the back. It's got a new look tiger nose grill. It's got a much bolder and a bigger design than before. And it's similar to what you'll find in the likes of the Kia Sonnet. It also has a signature star map lighting. So it has that sharp, almost L-shaped headlights up front. And you have this honeycomb-like grill with chrome slats that give it some more accents up front. Below you have gray and black plastic trim to give it more contrast. Now let's move on to the back. And by the way, on the sides, you can see that it has new look two-tone alloy wheels. They have this, I don't know what you call this design, but it's not spoked. And I'm not sure if I like it. I admit that it does kind of match the design of the Carnival quite nicely, but I'm still not sold on it completely. Now here at the back, you have new look tail lights. This sharp looking trim now extends all the way to the other side, it now stretches the width of the lift gate. And since we're already here, as always, let's check out back. It has a power lift gate. And like before, it still has this large storage compartment here at the back where our associate editor, Sheng Banzon, can fit herself in. Actually, I can fit there. It's really big. And this is where you'll stow the third row seats. Now, I'm not gonna fold it down completely, but just to show you that it's an easy thing to do, even if you do it in the wrong, wrong sequence like I did. But yeah, it's very easy to configure the seats from the back. Now, let's check out the inside. So we're now here behind the wheel and I haven't closed the door, specifically just to show you this. My seat is moving. This is a new feature in the new Carnival. It has an easy ingress and egress option now. Anyway, before we take a quick tour, I'm just gonna close the rear door because Charles left it open. Similar to the one in the old Carnival, you have controls for your sliding doors here and for your power lift kit as well. So just like before, it's a very premium and nice looking cabin. But what I like with what Kia has done to the interior is that they changed up the light beige-like finish contrasted with the black accents with this. This is what they say is an off black trim. My eyes are sometimes fail me with colors, but what I'm seeing is a dark black trim on the dash with a brown-like finish here and a lighter shade of brown here in the plastic panels that you can also see on the door panels. And it's very light. It's very pleasant to the eyes. Hindi siya mahirap tingnan. Medyo magaan siya. It's relaxing. It's comforting. Because it's not too dark. It's not too light. It's just right. Now, they changed the layout as well because they did change up the large control panel here in the old Carnival that kind of made it look like a like an airplane. It had so many controls and buttons here. Now they change it up. They have they have two knobs for your dual climate control and this touch panel for your AC. What this did to the cabin is that it gave it more space. It opened up this entire portion and made it feel a bit more spacious than it was before. Underneath that, you have two USB-C charging ports and you have a wireless charging pad here underneath and a 12 volt socket as standard. Now over here, you have, of course, your cup holders, which are supposedly bigger than before and your bottle holders, which I know a lot of you will appreciate. Behind that, you have controls for your seat ventilation and seat heating. You have a small compartment here, for, probably for your phone, your wallet, or your keys. And you have this large center armrest with a large storage compartment underneath. So let's move back here. Over here, I have a new pair of screens that's now housed in a slimmer and a slimmer and sleeker looking panel. Back then, you may recall that the old Carnival had a gloss black plastic trim around the displays, similar to what you'll find in the Staria. It was okay, but this is so much better. This, by the way, is a 12.3 inch multi-information display and a 12.3 inch infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now over here, you have all your controls for the instrument cluster and for the head unit. 
So this screen is really nice. It has a clear and crisp display and it still has that signature Kia side mirror camera function that when you turn the signal stock to wherever you're turning, it shows a circular display here of the camera and you'll get to see the curb or whatever's beside you just so you won't hit it. Anyway, enough about the front seat because the highlights as always are in the back. So let's go. So I also have controls for my doors here. Di lang talaga marunong magsara ng pinto si Charles, kaya hindi yeah, ginawa kanina. Anyway, I have a sunshade, which was also put up para hindi masyado mainit. And I have seat ventilation and heat heating functions, controls of which can be found here. Bosa natin yung seat ventilation kasi mainit. So with the press of a button, you press and hold. Okay. So you just press and hold and it automatically does this. So you'll be in relaxation mode. So fair bit of advice, don't do this if someone's at the back. May ipit sila. And when you if you want to go back to your original position, you can just press and hold the reset button and it'll do this. So you also have a bunch of amenities here at the back. You have two USB-C charging ports behind the two front seats. You have your own 12 volt socket here. Of course, as I mentioned, there are two cup holders here and a slot for your phone. And you have a small cubby at the bottom. And you also have your dedicated sunroof here. Medyo malaki actually. There's a control for it up front and a dedicated control here at the back. You also have dedicated controls for the AC, which can be found here on the right side. So if you're seated here on the left passenger side, it's not impossible. So if you want to adjust this, do it before you sit here or settle down in the second, in the right side of the second row. Of course, space isn't going to be an issue here because you can adjust your seats in so many ways. It might be an issue for those at the back. But that being said, you're not going to recline this all the way anyway if there are six or seven of you inside. So it shouldn't be that big of an issue. I'm not going to make my way all over there because... Hassle pa. Anyway, pero maluwag dyan. I can easily fit in the third row. Actually, goy na natin. Makapagalitan pa kami. So the thing with most MPVs like this is that the third row seats sometimes become uh, optional. They're like auxiliary to everything else that's inside the cabin. But here in the Carnival for the third row passengers, it will definitely feel like you weren't forgotten in the designing of this car because you have dedicated AC vents for both passengers, dedicated cabin lights. You even have a sunshade, this cute little sunshade which you're going to put up right now. Medyo masikip lang. Ayan, there you go. You have your own sunshades. You have USB-C ports for both passengers. You have a small cubby with a bottle and cup holder and another small compartment for your phone or your wallet and an armrest. The only thing missing here is a center armrest, which might be too much to ask. Besides, this is a three-seater third row, so the idea is there will be three people here. But in reality, I'm not sure if they're gonna fit three people as big as me, but two Leanders will have no problem sitting in the third row. Now, it just looks a bit cramped right now because I did slide my seat all the way back. But this is the seat position with the second row passenger having the time of his life. So you can move this a bit more forward to open up more space for me. And in any case, you still have room for your legs here in the middle tunnel. So it's really comfortable here. I could spend a long road trip here and I wouldn't have any complaints. So we're now on the road and for the full Kia Carnival experience, I decided to sit here at the back. So the Kia Carnival, the face of the version, is powered by the same 2.2 liter smart stream turbo diesel engine as found in the old model. It puts out 199 horsepower at 3,800 RPM and 440 newton meters of torque from 1,750 to 2,750 RPM. So as before, it's still a powerful diesel engine that can really pull its weight and then some. But what I noticed about this one is that it's really light. It's really light to drive. It's huge, it's big, and it's hard to maneuver through tight spaces. But the steering is very light, and surprisingly, the turning radius is really good. It's not an MPV I'd hate to drive. Because compared to, like, say, the likes of the Honda BRV or the Hyundai Stargazer or the Toyota Avanza and Velos, those are smaller MPVs. These big MPVs, these minivans, 
are actually can be a bit tiring to drive but this one is really good it feels planted it has nice engine response and it's actually fun to be behind the wheel of now moving on to ride comfort now that's something else because if you probably if you've watched the big test we did of the hyundai staria and the toyota high a super grandia we were complaining about the starius ride it was pretty stiff it was pretty bad and it's supposedly the twin of the carnival but this one it's so much better so we're not driving on asphalt right now so i may be shaking just a bit but overall the ride is really good it's quiet inside this cabin nvh levels are down to a minimum and the ride is supple and it eats up a lot of road imperfections quite easily and it's really comfortable to be inside this cabin back to the driving this does come with new functions new features specifically adas it has adaptive cruise control now and it also has lane departure warning lane keep assist all of which we have been able to try out earlier and it's really nice to have safety features like that in a big big car like this because it is it is really, it might be hard to drive in traffic or on the highway for some people. So yeah, having assist features like that is a good bonus. So for the big question, how much is it going to be? Well, we were told at the time of this shoot, the image pricing is going to be 3 to 3.5 million pesos. Because there are two variants, by the way, and what we're driving right now is the top of the line trim. So 3 to 3.5 million pesos. Once we do get the final prices, we'll put them here or we'll put them in the description. Hopefully we'll get it before the launch. If we don't, it's going to be in the comment section. So check it out there. So anyway, 3 million, 3.5 million for a premium MPV like this one. If you don't want to blend in, you want to stand out a bit because that's what the new Carnival is. It has a lot of style and it has huge road presence. If that's what you want from your MPV, that's not just a point A to point B comfortable van, that's a pretty good purchase.